all we're doing is just reaching for that switch but not turning it on. Because, guess what? Our flesh enjoys the darkness. That's right. That's true. How many are guilty? Amen. Everybody. I don't care how big that sin is or how little that sin is. David himself had to confess and say, Lord, get rid of these secret faults that are in my heart. That's right. Put your word in my heart that I may not sin. But we refuse to put the word in our heart. We put it in our mind because we read it. Mm -hmm. But we need God's word down in our heart. Amen. So it can wipe out and take over dominion over the dark things in our heart. We needed to take over. We got the power. That's right. We got the power. Ain't no sense in saying you can't. Because what? We can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. That's, right. That's if you let him strengthen you. Sometimes Christ comes and he wants to, he wants to strengthen us and he said, not yet. Hold back. We're going to quench the Holy Spirit. God be trying his best. The Holy Spirit be trying his best. Come on, let's do right. Come on, let's do right. You're like, no, not now. Come on, let's do right. No, not now. Y'all seen that old, that old, one of old commercials, right, where you had the devil on one side and the angel on the other side? That's true. We've never experienced it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've all been there. You're right. You're right. Hey, guess what? Guess what we chose? 99.99.9% of the time. Yeah, we chose the dark side. Especially when no one is looking. We think we're getting away with yeah, that. Say that now. Because it's that night and you're not around your friends or your church folks. Yeah. We're around other people that are about the world. So we want to be in the world with them. That's true. And we pretend like we are on the dark side. Uh -huh. When you know you're on the side of life but you're not turning up the light. Uh -huh. You're not letting your light shine. Your opportunity comes because you're surrounded by darkness. But now it's time to let your light shine. When you get the opportunity to let your light shine, let it shine. That's right. That's right. Turn up the juice. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Because God did not give us a spirit of fear, right. but of peace and of a sound mind. That's right. He says, when you are weak, I'll make you strong. And those that can't, you got to remember what the word, what does the word say? The Greater word. is what? He that is in me than he that is in the world. Come on now, preachers. Come on. Everybody is preaching this morning. Oh, for God. We need to turn up. It's a lot. Some of us won't even turn it on. Let's not turn it up. <laughs> now, we all know that the light in our heart has a variable switch. It ain't one that you just turn on and turn off. Our the light that is in us has a variable. Just like those fans that you can turn it down to be slow or you can turn it up to be fast. So it's up to us what level we turn that light up to to get rid of the darkness. You know, if we got the dim light, you can look in the corner and you can see light darkness all around. Uh -huh. Amen. But the more you turn that light up, the more that darkness disappears. Y'all yeah. with me? All right. Now, all I need is a few old amens and I'll be done. I'll be out of your way. I need y'all to stay with me. I need y'all to understand that we have the light and we have dominion over darkness. Look at your neighbor and say, we got dominion over light, over darkness. Look at your other neighbor and say, we got dominion over darkness. Turn up the light. Turn up the light. Turn up the light. Turn it up. Turn it up. Use every bit of watch that we can get into it. Because sometimes, because the spirit be willing and the flesh be weak. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's so right. we have to strengthen our spirit by turning up the juice. That's right. Let's crank it up, y'all. Come on. Yeah. Let's turn it up on 10. Yeah. All right. All right. 
Don't be stuck in the closet in that dark place. So we got so many closet saints that love the darkness. They'll call, they'll get the closet in a minute. I ain't with them. Ain't that what Peter did? Peter was a bright light. He was one of the brightest of the of the disciples. Amen. He even told he told Jesus, "I'll be with you." Even unto the end, unto the death, I'm going to stick with you. Uh -huh. what do you do? But Jesus said, I pray for you. Uh, come on. Come on. Satan is desire to sift you as a weed. Right. And before the day is through, before the cock crows three times, you're going to deny me. He went to where they had took Jesus. One that knew and said, Aren't you one of them? No, I'm not with them. I don't know them. Uh, yes, he did. And he went and he stood by the fire and warmed his hand, watching to see where Jesus was. He said, ain't you one of them? Three out of them? No, no, I don't know that man. I only heard about him. I don't know that man. And then he came and stood at the door where Jesus was. And another person that knew it. You were one of those twelve that was that that been going around preaching in Jesus' name. No, not me. Not me. I wasn't one of them. That's your people mixed up. <laughs> hey man, thank you. You got the wrong guy. I'm not one of them. And that's the way we do from day to day. You may not say amen, but we know it for a fact that it's true. I don't care how much spirituality you got. I don't care how much anointing that you got. From time to time, we don't act like Christians. We don't act like we got no light in us at all. We go right along and compromise ourselves and go right along with the darkness. That's true. That's true, Daddy. But we fall short, but we don't have to, you know, God is there to pick us up. The song said we fall down, but we get up. But we get up. Some of us like to be down <laughs> and wallow in the dark. Oh, I love the gamble. I ain't giving up that. In fact, some of us skip church just to watch and watch that car. <laughs> some of us even fall short when we say, well, I ain't going to miss this Sunday because I'm Super Bowl long. I ain't going because this is the World Series. It hurts, but it's right. <laughs> I'm going to stay at home and I'm going to cook today for my husband. <laughs> like you done said something right and good. <laughs> oh, I'm going to take my wife out to breakfast this morning. Like you done said something good. <laughs> Girl. We think that we do good, but it takes more than just being good to get into that holy place. We have to be holy. We have to be godly. Not just goodly, we have to be godly. And godly is a practice behavior. If we do not practice being godly, we're only going to be goodly. That's as far as we're going to go. And we think just because we pay our time and we give offers, we come here to church, you think that that's going to get you into heaven? No. You think just because you go ahead and help out your neighbor or mow their lawn, wash their car, you think that it's holy because we go over to our neighbors and help them clean their house or cook food for them? You think it's holy because we go to the, go to the hospital to pray for somebody, to be with somebody in their time of need? That's not holy, that's goodly, but we need to get godly. Amen. We need to turn up the juice in spite of. And here we find over in 2 Corinthians, we find that Paul says, but whatever respect, Anyone else is bold. Speak in foolishness. I 
am just as old myself. 